Hello everybody, this is Yasmin from YarkSpiriFantasyArt.com and today I'm going to show you uh, two different types of uh, color sample tools. Uh, the first one is the eyedropper tool and the second one is the color sampler tool. Both of these have two completely different functions and uh, they're extremely useful depending on what you're trying to do. So first let's start off with the eyedropper tool. What this tool does is it directly samples the color once you click on it. So if I click on this blue part here, uh, you can see that in my color palette here, um, I have that color selected. If you look in my active color swatches area, uh, you'll notice that that color has now been selected. Uh, so I can now paint with that uh, color and do a various different applications as well. Um, if I click on the white, same thing, it samples that layer. Now, there's a couple of uh, things that you can uh, set. You'll notice that when I click and if I hold this, uh, there's a ring that shows me the sampled color. I can actually turn that off if I go up top here and that will no longer show me that uh, what color has actually been sampled. Uh, another way to view it if you're not using that enabled is you can look at your active colors and that will automatically show the color that you're currently using. Now you do also have a couple different uh, areas that you could change. You could change the sample size. Uh, so by default it's that point sample but I could change it to 11 by 11 and it will change the sample area. So I'm just going to go back to point sample. You generally don't have to change your point sample area. Uh, I haven't yet found a reason to change it, uh, but um, you can depending on what you're trying to do. Now you'll notice that um, I actually changed my text by doing this. Uh, the reason for this is because I had the my text actually selected when I was sampling and because of that uh, it did change the color. So I'm just going to go back to the background and undo that. Okay, And I can also change how many layers are being sampled. So if I do have multiple layers, I can uh, choose to sample all the layers, which is normally what you want to do. But let's say you're trying to sample a very specific color and you have uh, other colors below it. You do need to change this to the current layer and select your correct layer color. Uh, another thing that could cause some issues is that if your background color has not been flattened, uh, in this case I have flattened this background color, and I try to sample any of these colors, the sample color would not be 100% accurate. In order to get an accurate color sample, you essentially have to turn off all your layers, including your background, white background layer. If you don't do that, the color will be slightly off. Uh, so that's something you might want to keep in mind if you're using uh, this tool. Now if you are using uh, very specific colors on a continual basis, you do want to save them in your color swatches area. So once you've sampled the color, let's say the blue here, I can actually uh, save this as a new swatch here. And what that will do is it will allow me to immediately uh, use that color by sampling that. Now I'm actually going to go to the brush tool right now because there is a, a very cool thing that you can do uh, with this uh, eyedropper tool. Now by default uh, this keyboard shortcut should be enabled on your computer but essentially when you're painting, as you can see I have it uh, set to 50% opacity, I can actually interactively change it to the color sample by holding down uh, the alt key and then sampling that color and what that allows me to do is just sample that color really quickly so that I don't actually have to keep on pressing the buttons and that does save you a lot of time once you've gotten used to it. It will really speed up your workflow uh, and it's definitely something I do recommend. Now there is another tool here uh, if I click on here there's also the color sampler tool now this one functions slightly differently uh, than the eyedropper tool. What this one does is when I click on here is it creates a sample point. So it gives me the data that I need in the on the side here. So it gives me because I have my settings set to CMYK it gives me the CMYK values for that color. 
So I can uh, do that for multiple colors and it saves that. Up to four colors can be sampled at a time and it literally just gives you a breakdown so that if I'm trying to do an image or work on an image and I'm using very similar colors every time then I can essentially uh, save these values or write them down so that I don't have to continuously uh, find these. So if I click on the color picker here um, I can essentially just save or I can essentially uh, replace these values in the CMYK area. So if I change this to uh, I'm going to actually sample the second sample that I had. I can actually save type that in I'm just uh, copying in that information right now. And that automatically changes it to that sampled color. Uh, it's very useful if you're repeating your colors a lot. Now what is unfortunate is that you can't just uh, click on these and change to that color. But if you do want to do something similar to that, I just recommend that you save a separate swatch and that's going to save you a lot of time. Oh, uh, and there's one more thing that you can do. For the color sample tool, you can also uh, change the point sample area. And you can also clear all your values that you have in here by simply clicking the clear button. And what that does is it sets everything to zero. So that's it for uh, this week's tutorial. Uh, next week, I will be showing you the ruler tool, the note tool, and the count tool. Uh, these are also very useful tools to know about. You probably won't use it very much for painting purposes. Uh, you may use it for editing purposes, however. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you guys soon. So thank you and take care.